second you don't get drafted, what do you do? I want to give that advice to younger kids to where you need to have that backup plan. It needs to be there because life will hit you like that. And you, if you don't have that degree, if you've never focused on your studies, you're left out to the wolves. And that's just it. You're done. What's up, guys? It's Alex with RecruitingBoard.net. And we are the home of smaller college football recruiting. If you want to keep this video grind going, our last video, The Truth of D3 Scholarships, got 6,000 views and it's going up. So we're going to keep trying to give you guys great stuff via YouTube. Like I said, on our platform, we focus on Division II and Division III recruiting. However, today we have a special guest. That's Jackson Prep legend and former Ole Miss quarterback, Ryan Buchanan. Before we talk to Ryan, I'm going to tell you a little bit about his career. We're doing our first ever giveaway. The link will be in the description how to enter. It's real quick. We want to give love to people who are supporting us early before we blow up. We're going to be giving out a $50 Amazon gift card. And you get to cop one of these fresh recruitingboard.net t-shirts. Can't find them anywhere else in the market. Got them in Bowdoin Black and Fort Valley Blue. So, click that link below. Now, let's jump into Ryan's story. First, we need to dial it back to 2013. Hit that tape. 2013, Ryan was ranked a four-star quarterback by some of the biggest recruiting sites out there, like Rivals, Scout.com, and ESPN. He received offers from all over. He ended up choosing Ole Miss early. It was an easy decision for him. Being a Mississippi kid and loving Ole Miss his whole life, it was his dream to go there and eventually be the starting quarterback for the team. That 2013 Ole Miss recruiting class ended up being number five in the nation and producing four first round picks, Evan Ingram, Laquan Treadwell, Laramie Tunzel, and Robert Kimdichie. Ole Miss needed a quarterback for when Bo Wallace left and the Jackson Prep star was expected to be it. He had a ton of hype and support from the state of Mississippi and his football career looked bright, but not everything went that way. After redshirting his freshman year, Ryan spent the next season as the team's holder on field goals and played sparingly during the season. In the spring of 2015, Chad Kelly transferred to Ole Miss from East Mississippi, which created a quarterback battle between Buchanan and Kelly, which ended up going to Chad Kelly. Entering his redshirt junior year without starting a game, typically players would transfer. Ryan took the road less traveled. In February of 2016, just after signing day, Ryan Buchanan gave up football, deciding he wanted to be a regular student and focus on his future. Now, how, I know what you're asking. How could this happen to a former four-star quarterback? When I saw Ryan on LinkedIn, I knew I had to reach out to him. Yeah, man, no problem. Thanks for having me. Ryan, so as I was telling the viewers before, you had a different career when it comes to college football and a completely different experience but can you describe your high school recruitment during that time you know you're 17 years old um it was crazy I mean looking back it's, it was kind of hard to believe that SEC schools and uh, other schools were kind of courting me and wanted me to sign there um at one point going into my junior year excuse me going into my senior year I mean I was offered from Alabama who won a national championship the year or so before Auburn, Florida, Oklahoma State, and North Carolina, and Arkansas, and a lot of other SEC schools. Um, and it kind of just blew up once I put myself out there and got on their radar, um, and they saw what I had to bring to the table. So it was kind of, it was tough trying to make that decision there. And there's a lot of factors that go into that. Ultimately, obviously, I ended up picking Ole Miss, um, and I'm grateful for that decision. But as a lot of people know, especially the quarterback position, you know, you get one guy on the team that plays it, you're not rotating. So you kind of want to try to find your place at the time. That's why I signed with Ole Miss um, to come in and be behind Bo Wallace and hopefully try to start after he went to the NFL or whatever he did. Um, but, yeah, so I ended up picking Ole Miss, but it was definitely crazy when I was uh, 17 or 18. You know, you're like you said, you get offers from Alabama and all these SEC schools. You're 17 years old. Did you think, I might be going pro here? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's hard not to when you see how, like, Alabama, and you see all these guys that if you play there, you have a very strong chance of winning 10 games, um, 10, 11, 12. And, you know, you, a lot of guys go straight to the NFL, and then the, 
some of these kids that are offered out of high school um, have the talent, if you're offered by a lot of SEC schools, to have that talent to translate into the pros. And at the time, you know, obviously having those offers, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go play, start two years, two or three years, and then go pro. So that's just – you're very narrow-minded, I guess, coming out of high school when you're courted to go play college football like that. You know, obviously things didn't go as planned for right. you. And you made an interesting decision, though, to stay at Ole Miss instead of transferring. Yeah. You know, first, before we go into that, you know, I actually talked to Coach Black yesterday. Handled that with such class. Right after signing day, you know, that was when you decided to leave, you know, to take attention away from signing day. What was that feeling? And like, you know, I'm going to give it up. Yeah, it was it was a gut wrenching feeling. I mean, I could I could feel it in my stomach having just thinking about making that call. Now, it was something that I've thought about over the last month or so in our season when we won the Sugar Bowl. Um, and it was kind of depending on to see if Chad Kelly decided to go pro that year after we won that Sugar Bowl. Um, and if in turn, if he did, then I would have stayed and started and played that next year. Um, but I was kind of waiting to see what he would do and obviously decided to come back for one more year for his senior year. Um, and after having to come in behind Bo Wallace, who was already – the starter at Ole Miss when I arrived on campus um, has had two years of experience. I really didn't want to sit behind another guy waiting for an injury. Now you could get, you can get on campus as a quarterback your freshman year or redshirt freshman year, um, and a guy rolls his ankle and you're the starting quarterback. You have a great playbook for that game and it works and you're in the spotlight and it's great, um, but. Bo just never got hurt for two years, and I was trying to weigh my options between, you know, going four years, not really getting my opportunity, transferring, sitting out a year, and having one year to play somewhere completely new. If I transfer, the risk reward wasn't there. Uh, kind of giving up on my degree that I've worked for and the relationships that I've built off of the field, and I established a life outside of football. Um, and I just – it was tough making that decision, but I felt like at the time, my weighing my future, am I going to the NFL? You know, if I sit behind one more year, most likely not to either the NFL or getting a job. And I didn't know what I wanted to do at the time. So I took a ladder um, and decided to go take a couple internships, start interviewing and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. So there are so many different ways that that situation could have been handled. Chad Kelly has been dismissed from his college football team. The quarterback apparently didn't see eye to eye with his coaches. Big part of the disposition is maturity and leadership. Kyle Allen, a 14 game starter and another top ranked quarterback prospect, elected to transfer. But like I said, you kept your cool. Yeah, um, I mean, my parents always raised me to hold myself to a higher standard, I guess, especially. Um, in the somewhat public eye that people are watching or reading a news board or any interviews like that. Um, and same with Coach Black, he coached me up in that way to show how I should handle myself off the field when I was in high school. And um, I just knew, I mean, I just, I, I didn't want to cause, especially around signing day, I remember how special it was for me when I signed with Ole Miss. I knew at the time I didn't want to take any of that attention away from those high school recruits talking about how I left. Maybe there's a gap in the quarterback position, whatever it may be. Um, so I just thought that would be the best thing to do was to talk to Coach Freeze and Coach Warner and um, trying to – they knew about it, I guess, two weeks before, um, but we just kept it on the DL. Now it wasn't something they wanted to hear. And obviously they tried to convince me to stay for, for a while, but it was – it was a decision that I know I've thought through um, over a couple months, and it was just – it was on me to finally go through with that. And like I said, it wasn't easy. Um, it was by far the hardest talk I've ever had in my life. But, you know, I don't look back at it. That's just that's just how it worked out. And, uh, you know, I don't look back on anything that I've done in life. And that first fall, take me through it when you're not on the sidelines. Yeah, I had to leave. I had to leave the game, the first game, try to watch as a regular student hated it because everyone that I've lived with I room with everyone who played football in my first three years of college and then like feeling I should be on that field I should you know be there like couldn't take it I left the game um Alabama game I was closer to the field I still hated it because I wanted to be there when we played Alabama at home and left for a little bit and then someone gave me tickets like 
further up in some box, which I actually enjoyed better because I didn't feel like I was really close to the field. And then like halfway through the season, I would watch some games, but I really wouldn't watch a lot because I would want to be there. And that was my identity at the time was to be a football player at Ole Miss. I mean, that's who I was. That's why I came here. That's what I was known as. And it's hard when you're a college football player anywhere to have another identity outside of that. So I struggled with that, um, I guess, my last year of college. But it was definitely tough. Chip, and I remember looking you up on Twitter. And one of the first things, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but was in your bio was football does not define me. Yeah, if, yeah. Yes, and uh, I'm surprised I remembered that. But, you know, that's something that now – Years later, it definitely speaks levels to. Just, can you tell us where you are now? So, yeah, I work at a commercial insurance brokerage over in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's funny, I really, how I ended up here is a lot of different things. It really came from, the, I, I dropped football spring of 2016. I did an internship that summer with a high-risk insurance company, um, commercial insurance company, and over in Atlanta and I worked there all summer and then through networking from being in Atlanta, I came across the CEO of this firm who I had breakfast with and loved what they had and what they pitched. And he talked about going through the interview process with me the next year um, and ended up taking this job. But, you know, I probably would have never come into contact with this company over here if I never took that, had the time to take that internship um, cause I would have been playing football, I guess in 2016. So it's funny how one thing can lead to another and where you end up. Um, but talking about how I used to have that bio and I, it's really true. I, you know, football doesn't define me and I've had coach freeze and, and other motivational speakers, I guess, come to Ole Miss. And that's what they talk about because that's all you're known for. And that's what people know you for, um, whether you're a big time high school recruit or a college football player. And to you, you think that's your whole worth. Um, and once I started figuring out and growing as a man throughout college, um, I mean, if I, if football was my whole life and that's really how I define myself, I probably would have stayed. And, you know, I don't know if that was a good or bad decision, but I could at least see another side of life because I never let that define me in the first place. Working with high school kids, you know, that's, that's all they want. You know, a lot right. of them is just, I want to go pro. Everybody plays their last down, you know? Right. And, yeah. It's important to have that plan. So one thing I wanted to ask was how important it was for you to balance football and academics because you were a finance major. Very, It's very important. You never know. I mean, your brain is telling you, I'm going pro. I'm having a great season. Um, whether you start or not, I know a lot of guys who played for Ole Miss that I'm friends with, you know, played – a full year and they're a starter for Ole Miss and they have a knee injury, whether it's like an offensive lineman, a regular play and some guy falls on your knee, it's torn up or another guy that's a great athlete safety had a knee injury. And, you know, you're just, you're, you're not to the level you used to be and it can end a career. It can end the, your chance of going to the NFL and NFL scouts looking at you because of one injury when the year before you could be an all SEC player. So the second you don't get drafted, what do you do? I mean, it's done. Like everything that you've worked for in college, no, no one's going out to hold your hand, no coaches to go hold your hand and try to get you a job. You're done. You're not part of the team anymore. So if you didn't take care of your studies, if you really didn't push yourself to get a strong major, to actually get in the doors of getting a good job, um, you know, you're, you don't have anything. So a lot of people take it for granted, maybe just do a general major, get by above a 2.0 um, and expect to go to the NFL and maybe two games left, they have a knee injury and you're done. And what do you do now? I mean, you just, and you're given so many opportunities, at least in college, doesn't matter what level, if it, you need to make the most of it. And I was told, you know, that my finance major wasn't easy. Um, I stayed up a lot of late nights and I might not have had the highest GPA in the quarterback room because I wasn't a general studies I was taking investment exams instead of, you know, PE or parks and recreation or something. <laughs> like that. So, it, but it, you know, looking back, by having that major, ball opened doors for me to get an interview with some of these companies, and it helped me, I believe, at least to get in the door with the company I'm at now. You can't overlook. I mean, and look, 
college scouts look at high school GPAs too. That shows how you are as a person and where you dedicate your time. If you're a great athlete, or at least a marginal athlete, you have good talent, but you don't take care of your studies and you have a little off the field problems, they're going to go find someone else. Someone else has the exact same amount of talent as you. And they may ha- even may have a little bit more, but there's a guy out there who has the same amount of talent, but he may have a over 3.0 or 4.0 grade point average and he's a straight shooter. They're going to take the risk on him. They're not going to take it on you. And I've heard that from many recruiters and they told me that. So it really, it's a bigger deal than, it's not just older people lecturing you because it's the right thing to do. It's going to affect your life. Um, luckily it affected mine in a positive way. And I want to give that advice to younger kids to where you need to have that backup plan. It needs to be there because life will hit you like that. And you, if you don't have that degree, if you've never focused on your studies, you're left out to the wolves and that's just it. You're done. We got a lot of kids, at least on the site, you know, you know if you have like words of wisdom, kids maybe not getting recruited by D1s. Yeah, don't be discouraged. I mean, at least for the NFL, it doesn't matter where you go. I can assure you of that. They're not looking at just Division One guys. If you have talent and a work ethic, they will find you. They will have a tryout. They will have a pro day. So don't give up working on the football side. Like, I'm all for that um, because you're going to have an opportunity to keep working. Now, until that door shuts, if you realize that door is shut, you're in school, you're playing, doesn't matter if it's division two or three, you're still going to get an education. Um, And obviously the goal is to get to D1 and to get to the NFL. But I'm telling you, you need to take your studies hard because you don't want to be that guy. Um, You know, I referenced someone earlier, I'm not going to say his name, but there's someone who used to be one of the top players in the state of Mississippi, top SEC uh, football player, had had an injury and, you know, just had a just working a job right now that he probably wishes he could get something else, but you know, didn't take his studies as serious. So I'm, you really, it doesn't matter if it's division two or three, make the most of it. Yeah. What have you learned from playing college sports that translates into the real world? I mean, I learned, I think number one, a work ethic and number two, tardiness in general. And that could be anything from turning in a work assignment that needs to be done by the end of the day to showing up to a meeting 10 minutes ahead of time. I mean, I get scared showing up to a meeting if I'm five minutes ahead of time, because if I was ever within a couple minutes to a workout or to a meeting, yeah, I knew that would hurt my chances of maybe getting the nod to start. That would hurt my chances of get, obviously just getting punished, you know, doing suicides because I was late to something. And I, that trains you to me, it trained me a lot, at least yeah, they just getting stuff done in a timely manner. Everyone in college, at least doesn't matter if D2 or 3, someone's going to have that same amount of talent. And you're competing against someone to beat them out. And now this was on the football field that I would stay after and throw and throw into the net and work on my feet, footwork constantly. But at the same time, I mean, now I'm in the job. There's someone out there that's working another commercial insurance brokerage. And he's going after the same clients I'm going after. What's going to separate me from him when I go do a sales pitch to a client? Well, you know, if I have three designations under my belt that I'm studying for constantly when I have time at work and at home, going that extra mile will separate myself. And uh, that's what I learned in football. And I try to translate that um, to work. There's always somewhere out there that's just, you know, they're trying to get ahead of you, no matter if it's on the field or in the workforce. And honestly, I've never used that. And it just kind of clicked for me. So. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you, Ryan, for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Hey, guys, so thank you for joining us today. I really hope you took something out of Ryan's experience in college football. It's not all peaches and cream, guys. and But Ryan is doing way better now than he was at Ole Miss, and he used what college football is supposed to be for, or college athletics in general, and that's to use your talents to receive an education to help better your future. Sometimes life throws you a curveball. Are you going to let it strike you out or are you going to knock it out of the park? I'm Alex with RecruitingBoard.net. Thank you so much for joining us again. Please drop a thumbs up on this video. Please share it. Leave a comment, whatever you want to do. And again, please click the contest link below to enter to get one of these shirts and a $50 Amazon gift card. And if you're a high school football player and you want to start connecting with college coaches, make a profile. It's free on RecruitingBoard.net. Alex Agrella, signing off.